Welcome to Old Classic Car and this collection of 125 photos of British Leyland BL cars of the late 1960s through to the beginning of the 1980s. And we begin with the Austin 3 litre, circa 1970. Not a great success back in the day, but quite a handsome old car, I think. That's followed by an Allegro 3, I think. Austin Allegro, this was down at the British Motor Museum at Gaydon. There's a Maestro behind, and a Mini, a Mini City, a W Reg example. This was at the big 60th anniversary Mini Meet at Gaydon back in 2019. MCH339K, that's my dad's old 1972 Vandenplatz 1300. It's been replaced by a Morris Minor now. And also from 1972 is this MGB GT on Mini Light replica wheels. A Webasto roof and a racy door mirror as well. And a Mini City A registration from the early 1980s and a Ritz limited edition alongside. By this time, Mini was the brand in itself. It wasn't Austin or Morris, it was simply Mini. And next up, Triumph. We've got a Spitfire Mark IV, a TR6, and a GT6 Mark III. Back to Gaydon and a 850 KWK, that's a Morris Ital estate. In fact, I believe it's the last Ital and, by inference, the last Morris ever built. And here's a rarity, a Morris Marina Mumford convertible. Continuing with British Leyland Classics, we've got an N registration MG Midget 1500. And a rear three-quarter view of an R registration, 1976 Rover P5, the 2200TC, twin carburetor car. And a front three-quarter view of the rubber bumper MGB Roadster, again on Mini Light style wheels. Back to end registration now, 1974 stroke 75, and this is a Jaguar Series 2, four-door saloon. And that's followed by an MG Metro uh, with an aftermarket grille incorporating fog lamps. That's a wire registration car, so 1982, possibly early 1983. And a Rover SD1 CNA 500T from 1978 or 79. Quite a rare sight nowadays, so I've got a rear three quarter view of the same car. This is a 2600 example. You could get a 2.3 or a 3.5 litre V8. And a stag, dark blue Triumph stag, chrome, chrome wire wheels, end registration, so that makes it 1974 or thereabouts. A very similar car alongside. And the Austin Maxi, this is circa 1972-73, very rarely seen nowadays. I'm not quite sure what the wheels are from, hopefully someone will let me know in the comments. Now we've got a Daimler Coupe, the 4.2 Coupe. Very smart example, pillarless design, all the windows down there. And the Morris Marina Estate, circa 1972-73. This was at the Western Park Classic Car Show a few years ago. All manner of British Leyland cars around. And this was slightly more recently, a Triumph Dolomite Sprint. This was at the Chumley Castle a Classic Car Gathering a couple of years back. Very smart example. And then L registration MG Midget, round wheel arch version. Some cars had the round arches at the back like this one, others had the squared off arches. And slightly overcast today, and a Triumph TR7 convertible on non original alley wheels. Back to Gaydon, and this was a prototype, a design proposal for a booted Austin Metro, which didn't come to anything. Uh, fortunately, this sole example survives. And talking of Metros, we've got an MG Metro Turbo B registration car here, probably about 1984, I would guess, and a later Rover 100 in front of it. Series 3 Land Rover, our registration, which is about 1976 that came along, August 76 onwards. Very smart example. And a safety car built around a Morris Marina. This was used for developing various ideas that British Leyland were looking at to improve the safety of their road cars. And this is the Daimler DS420, which was based on the underpinnings of the old Mark 10 and 420G. This is a mid-1980s example, circa 1985. And here's another prototype that came to nothing. This was a Vandenplas version of the Austin Princess. 
unfortunately it survives down at Gaydon. Here's a rear three-quarter view of the same car. You can see the Vandenplas badging on the back there. And rivals back in the day, they got the Triumph Spitfire 1500 on the top and an MG Midget 1500, same engine, underneath. And there's another interesting proposal which didn't come to anything. This is a P-Reg, sort of mid-1970s, Rover SD1 Estate. Three V12s now, all the British Leyland era Jaguars. We've got an E-Type in the foreground, the Broad Speed Coupe, and an XJS beyond that. We've got a front view of another MG Metro, again, with the aftermarket front grille treatment, the original pepper pot wheels. And at the same meeting at Gaydon, it's YPX 2V, which is a Mini Clubman Estate, circa 1979 car. One of the very first Austin Princesses. Well, in fact, this is the Wolseley, the Wolseley 1822. One of the very first of the princess-shaped cars. Very few of those are made, and very, very few survive today. Lots more British Leyland cars coming up. And here we have the Vandenplas 1500, the VDP version of the Austin Allegro. Quite a challenging look to it. Slightly more sporty is the Austin 1300 GT. This is an L registration car, late 1972 or 1973. And the MG EXE. This was a proposal for a, a new sports MG back in the 1980s, which didn't come to anything other than this prototype. Next up, a Series 3 V12 E Type. Very smart car on non original knock on Dunlop style wheels. And totally different, but also under the BL banner, is this Y registration forward control Land Rover military vehicle. And the Mini, a Mini Clubman MYP447L. Another design proposal is this Triumph TR7 Fastback BHP2T. Just one car was made. This is left hand drive. A very smart, very original early Metro, Austin Mini Metro, SUT 72X, so that'll be sort of 1981 stroke 82. And the Montego, the Montego design dates back to the British Leyland days. This is a slightly later car when it became Austin Rover, but I don't have any photos of earlier Montegos, so that one will have to do. And that's followed by this Triumph Spitfire 1500 on a private registration. The Jowett Jupiter alongside. HOK 682W, that's one of the last, if not the last, MGB LEs. The end of the road for the MGB, of course, which came along in 1962. And continuing with that theme, we've got a rear view of a V8 MGB GT. That had the Rover 3.5 litre V8 engine under the bonnet. Next up, a early 1980s minivan. And a mini saloon alongside. And this was a Michelotti design proposal to replace and update the Triumph Dolomite. Quite a handsome looking car, shades of Fiat 131 I think going on there. Another view of an MG Metro, GYB 390Y. Next up, a fairly early Austin Princess LRX 19P, so that would be 1975 stroke 1976. And the 72 Rover P6, the 3.5 litre V8 car, with the later grille compared to the earlier cars. Triumph TR7 rally car, with a bevy of other TR7s either side of it. I couldn't find the photo of an Austin Ambassador, so I had to use a press photograph, but I wanted to include one here just for comparison with the Austin Princess. But the Ambassador was updated, it had the opening hatchback. Unlike the Princess, and here another Series 3 Land Rover. We're approaching halfway through this collection of British Leyland car photos now, and from about 1969, we've got a rally prepared Austin Maxi. That's followed by a Daimler two door XJ Coupe S registration, a 1977 car, dark brown. 
very smart. The rear view of a Jaguar version of the XJ 4.2C. Very smart car indeed. Thin white wall tyres. The Princess. This is the Austin Princess 2. The updated, slightly revised version. Early 1980s car. Any Princess is a rare sight nowadays. And here we have a GT6 Mark III. A mini pickup, a mini 95 pickup. There is a brochure review on the channel elsewhere for the minivan and pickup of this era, so if you like your old minis, please take a look at that. And then that's followed by a bright yellow Triumph 2.5 litre S, 2500 S, with a straight six under its bonnet. Another E Type V12 Series 3, this is a Roadster example from 1972. These are available with either the manual or the automatic gearbox, but most were the autos. And continuing with V12 Jaguars, we've got a TWR prepared XJS, Tom Walkinshaw Racing. And here we've got a very original looking Rover P6, 3.5 litre, the V8 car. Ready for a bit of spit and polish. That's followed by a similarly coloured Triumph 2000, the Mark II Triumph 2000 Saloon. Staying with Triumphs, we've got one of the Triumph Dolomite range. Not a sprint for a change, that's always good to see. It's good to see the more regular examples preserved. The race prepared MG Metro. And a wonderful old Rover P5B, this was the Queen's old car. JGY280. Next up, the Triumph 2500S Estate. Very late example, V registration, 1979. Must be the last one built, surely. And over to Donington for the historic festival, and this is a Bastos sponsored Rover 3.5 litre, the SD1. TWR again. Another late V8 P6. And a review of a Triumph Toledo. For some reason, I don't have many photographs of these, so uh, I was pleased to find this one alongside an early DAF 33. The Triumph Stag with its roof up, hard top. Roof down this time, a bright yellow Triumph TR6, eight registration, so that would have been. Uh, late 1969 or early 1970 with a 2.5 litre fuel injected engine and sat in a scrapyard many years ago a Daimler version of the XJ Saloon for the little saloon looking a little sorry for itself vinyl roof very 1970s that's followed by an Austin 1300 L registration so about 1973 also in view an early Mini and Morris Minor and a P5 and a Daimler XJ Saloon OFC 406T from about 1978. The TR7 convertible. The car that TR enthusiasts were calling out for when the TR7 was first introduced as a fixed head only. Again, another Triumph, Brown 2500S. Very smart S reg ex example from 1977. The head-on view of another Triumph TR6. This is a 1972 car with various other TRs and a Spitfire 1500 for company in this particular photograph. Nice Range Rover, X registration, 1981 or 82. X police car by the look of it. And a sectioned view of the Austin Allegro. Presumably this was a motor show car or a training aid. This was on display at the British Motor Museum Reserve Collection down at Gaydon. Now we've got another Rover P5B, this time it's a coupe. K registration, 1972. Plenty more British Leyland classics to come. Um, this primarily is road cars, but I thought I'd include a van. And this is the Austin Morris JU250 in minibus guise. And the Land Rover Series 3. Really nice Mini 95 pickup. The 
Triumph Spitfire Mark IV. This had the 1300cc engine, similar to that in the Mark III that went before. The Mini 1275 GT, very much the Mini Cooper of the 1970s in theory. Triumph 2500 Estate, very useful vehicle indeed, with a saloon alongside. 1973 car. And the Morris 1800. This was available as the Austin or the Morris. Um, plus there was the Bullsley version and there was the Austin 3 litre that was based upon this uh, floor pan. And the Spitfire Mark IV with a midget alongside. An MGA alongside that. A lovely XJ12 Series 2. Close up view of a Mini, 1970s, early 1970s Mini. Very much a British Leyland era car. Head on view of a Jaguar XJ6 Series 3. Jaguar by this time being very much a British Leyland product. An Austin 1100 Mark II J registration car from 1970. Two door saloon. Another rally prepared Austin Maxi. MG Metro, this one sporting the original British Leyland MG grille. No extra spot lamps included in it. Pop up sunroof, pepper pot wheels, etc. There's Busby in a Morris Minor van, a six or eight hundred weight van based on the Morris Minor. This is a 1972 van. There's a Suntour Caravanette, based on the Morris half-ton van. If you like your classic vans, please check out some of the other videos now on the channel. There's a very late example of a Triumph Herald 1360 convertible. BL era, just about. Another rubber bumper MGB Roadster. A review of an Austin Maestro. I couldn't find any photographs of a Maestro, I'm sorry, so I had to resort to a press, a press photograph rather, just to uh, have the Maestro represented here, and that's followed by another Morris Ital Estate. B registration, 1983-1984, one of the last cars, surely. Very similar to the one at Gaydon. And we've got a pair of Triumph TR7s with an MGB and another MGB and another MGB alongside it. In the rear three-quarter low-down view of a Series 3 E-Type V12 with non-standard rear exhausts. Usually they had a fishtail stale exhaust. Same on this car. Fishtail is gone. It's been replaced by a pair of twin pipes out the back. Another Austin Maxi. This one with a beige vinyl roof. Very 1970s. Great to see it at a classic car show a couple of years ago. A review of the same car, complete with tow bar and period correct maxi mud flaps, no less. A lightweight Land Rover, T registration, so late 1970s example, ex military presumably. Here's another one of those safety development vehicles, this one based on a Mini of the 1970s, various modifications in evidence there. With an early Range Rover, this one on towing duties with a period caravan behind it. Oh dear, two very down at heel Triumph Dolomites in the scrapyard many, many years ago. The nearest is a Sprint. I'm not sure about the one further away. Talking of Dolomite Sprint, here's a race prepared example in the Leyland Cars livery. This was at the Donington Historic Festival quite a few years ago now. That's followed by an MG Midget 1500 with a TR6 in the background and a Latin in the land. Could easily have been a period shot from the 1970s, but isn't. And the Wolseley 1885. This was the Wolseley badged version of the Austin and Morris 1800, the Land Crab, as they were called. Eight registration, so 1969. And a TR7 fixed head coupe. That's a V Reg car from 1979. Echoes of JPS Lotus in that colour scheme. 
And a close-up view of an early 1973 Austin Allegro. Just a few more cars to go now. And a convertible version of a Range Rover. This was a one-off vehicle, I believe. First owner was Roger Taylor, the drummer in Queen. And a Batman ice cream van conversion based upon a Mini 95 pickup. A stunning V12 XJ Coupe there. And a race prepared XJS at speed. This was seen several years ago at the Alton Park Racing Circuit during the classic weekend. And to round out this collection of British Leyland cars, we have a brochure view of the Triumph Acclaim. So, thank you very much for watching this video of 125 photos of classic BL cars of the 1960s, 70s and 80s. Uh, many more of the classic videos now on the channel. Thanks for watching this one. More videos very soon. Thanks for watching.